All right, happy Friday, everybody. Uh, another episode, another week, another day, uh, and it's going to be a good one. We uh, got three procedures today. Uh, first case is a uh, low back uh, PRP uh, with a some fascial plane hydrodissections uh, tossed in there. Our second case is a cervical and thoracic case. Um, still undecided if we are going to take more of a prolotherapy type approach uh, and inject the, the facets, the capsules, things like that, or if we're going to do uh, erector spinae plane hydrodissections uh, and take more of a nerve approach. We have a few other things to tease out uh, with that patient. Uh, and then our last case is a patient who uh, is having right knee pain and uh, he's having mechanical symptoms of a meniscus tear. Uh, he is uh, a good friend, but he's considering uh, doing a meniscus surgery. And so we discussed uh, doing a PRP procedure uh, to see if we can make some changes so that he does not have to have surgery. Uh, so that's our day. Uh, we've got a few students here hanging out with us. Uh, and uh, it's gonna be a good one. Go. All right, so first stage for our PRP blood draw. So we drew whole blood. Uh, from the patient here, we have uh, 180 milliliters of blood. This is mixed with an anticoagulant that stops the blood from clotting uh, too early. So we're going to, first stage is clear out the air, and then we're gonna transfer this into our sterile conical tubes. So that way we can uh, start our first spin. the pore plasma and then now we will reconstitute this what we are left with is our platelet pore plasma and our platelet rich plasma all right, everybody. So wraps up another episode of Fridays at RP. So we're gonna walk you through our procedures today. We ended up having two procedures today. Uh, one had to get uh, rescheduled. But so our first procedure was a patient who uh, has been suffering with some chronic back pain for quite some time. Now, 
The really interesting thing about her case is that she has had a lot of different regenerative injection procedures for her low back. Um, some have helped, um, but nothing has ever really uh, fully addressed uh, her pain. And she is still, you know, despite having facet joint injections uh, with PRP, with bone marrow, she's had intradiscal injections with bone marrow. Despite having all these things, she's still suffering with back pain and uh, is, is still kind of in a little flare. And so through our physical exam uh, and our evaluation, and then also her imaging, some of the things that came up for us uh, were some structures that had never been addressed before in her, which is always nice to see, you know, when we have a patient who has had procedures and our physical exam shows us that certain structures that have never been treated before, maybe because they haven't, hadn't been properly evaluated, are causing some pain because that gives us a new avenue to go down to see if that is contributing to her pain. And so uh, those structures specifically were the supraspinous and the interspinous ligaments. Those are the ligaments that are gonna uh, basically provide support for that posterior aspect of the spine to prevent uh, excessive forward flexion. And so with that, you know, we can have uh, pain from the actual ligament, but interestingly, we can also have pain from the medial cutaneous branch of the dorsal rami, which is a nerve that we treat really, really frequently for facet mediated pain. But in this particular case, a part of that medial branch actually comes up and innervates just around the actual spinous process. And so when we have tenderness palpation over the spinous processes, we can also have uh, pain coming from those nerves. In her case, uh, she'd had a positive response to what's called a medial branch block, which is a where they use a local anesthetic, they numb up that medial branch near the facet joint, and it's part of the diagnostic criteria for diagnosing facet mediated pain before doing a radiofrequency ablation. She had a positive response that in the past, but not really a strong positive response to the uh, facet joint injections. And so my thinking is that the, one of the potential reasons that she got uh, improvement was because the medial branch is also gonna innervate the supraspinous ligament, the interspinous ligament, and the skin over that area. And so she might've seen an improvement from that and then not an improvement from the facet joints because her pain was not coming from the facet joint. So uh, today we obviously injected the supraspinous ligament, the interspinous ligament. Uh, we also did, um, she might have some mild uh, discogenic pain. That part's a little unclear still. Now physical exam didn't really show that, but it kind of fits in with some other uh, features of her pain. And then uh, on imaging and physical exam, there were some mild signs for maybe some nerve impingement in the lumbosacral region. And so we ended up doing a caudal epidural for that as well with our platelet pore plasma. And then we did uh, two fascial plane hydrodissections. One is the lumbar erector spine, uh, sorry, erector spinae plane hydrodissection, which we've talked about before, but basically deep to the erector spinae group, superficial to the transverse process we inject in that fascial plane, which is gonna bathe the uh, the dorsal root ganglia and some of those nerves that are coming off the spinal cord there. Well, from the nerve roots, I should say. And the other was a, uh, a supraspinous plane hydrodissection, which we introduced probably about three or four months ago uh, with a, another complicated case that we had for supraspinous and interspinous ligament pain. And essentially what we have there is uh, we hydrodissect the supraspinous ligament from the actual deep uh, fascia. And so uh, we found that that is beneficial to help patients in their healing uh, because we get to treat a lot of the nerves that are uh, running through that area. So that was our first case of the day. Um, and overall that procedure went really, really well. The second case is uh, a patient where uh, we had, uh, he's got right knee pain uh, and he is having uh, mechanical symptoms. And we're gonna pause this and we're actually gonna skip over now to, you'll get to see the, uh, a brief, brief intake and physical exam. Uh, okay, so also for the students, refresh them on uh, what's been going on with the knee. This knee has carried the load for 15 years when I injured this knee. Um, I discovered I had a torn medial meniscus in 2009. Um, at that time, this knee was so bad, I was the doctors like, we could just go up ahead and fix it or meniscectomize it. And I was like, uh, we're just gonna leave it alone. So I've been leaving it alone for a while as I've gotten more active and putting on uh, weight via weightlifting. It's gotten to a point where it's 
mechanically causing issues and pain and and explain to them your what you feel when you say mechanical issues uh it's for so most times when this guy like if there's mechanical it's like a locking right so it's mostly an extension or flexion where you like really feel it for me it's more in the lateral movement so doctor believes it's a little flap tear so it kind of goes like this over so when i shift in like that words my knee will kind of go like that and clunk and click or if i'm on my back or on my side sleeping and i go down like that it'll, i can feel like a clunk, 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 clunk. it's kind of so we know there's going to be some form of instability uh, in the knee joint. And then where do you get pain? <clears throat> oh, medial side. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Worse right there. So already, based on where he's pointing, along with medial instability or medial pain, we suspect that the MCL uh, and thesis on the femur is going to be involved. So um, any, uh, any clicking? Yeah. Okay. Uh, did, it, did it ever catch? Yeah, it'll catch. Okay, so those are again our, our common symptoms for an actual uh, meniscus injury is the popping, the clicking, the catching, and the locking. So yeah, it'll get stuck in that. In order to move it, I have to go like that. And up. There it is. There it is. Yeah. That's a small one. Usually it's way bigger and it's like it's uncomfortable. And it's a pressure I feel it in there. Until it releases. And it's, yeah, it's big. And then I'm sore. And that's when the big ones are when my lateral side I'll feel it too. Like it's sore. So. No okay. clicking, nothing mechanical over there. Okay, beautiful. All right, so relaxed. Any pain here? Oh, okay. a little pressure on the medial, but nothing. Okay. Painful. How about in here? Pain, like, felt like little clicks, bubbles. Okay. Medial side. The medial side. Uh, flexion and extension are within normal limits. Extension is not painful. Uh, flexion causes pain on the medial side. Is that your pain? No, uh, just pressure. Just pressure? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and there's also uh, ear popping. Ear yeah, yeah, yeah. That too. Yeah. Uh, popping and instability uh, with force flexion. Yeah, what is there's pain? Yeah. Where? Medial. Medial front or medial back? Medial back. Okay. Uh, so McMurray's positive for uh, posterior. That is miserable. Okay. It's a nice relax. Uh, for posterior medial horn. How are we on this side? It's okay. A little weird sensation medially, but nothing laterally. Okay. Okay. Remember when you are testing. Uh, MCL and LCL. You don't want to test it in, the, in an extended knee because you've got bony contact and so it's very stable there. You have to unlock the knee in order to test. How are you here? Uh, a little weird, like pulling pain, not bad. Like, here or down lower? Down or lower. Down lower, more here? Uh, higher than that, but yeah. So over the joint line? Yeah. Okay. Familiar pain or no? No, it was not normal. Okay. Anything here? Not really. Okay. Uh, LCL testing is negative, but MCL testing is positive. Patellar apprehension is going to be negative. Contract your quad. Any pain? No. Clark's is negative. Any pain here? I don't like my kneecap being pressed down, but not pain. <laughs> he does like that. Uh, patellar grind test is negative. Uh, let's test. Walkman. Anything here? Yeah, that's uncomfortable when you pull anteriorly. Anteriorly? And where do you feel the discomfort? I can't tell you. Okay. Um, but ACL and PCL is negative because it's stable. Tenors up here? None. All good. All good, okay. Up in here? Nothing. Okay. Come to the joint line. You okay? Yeah. Okay. 
tender. Tender. All through here too. That's worst. Oh yeah, that's worst. Worst back here. Yeah. Okay, so uh, medial joint line is tender, uh, and it worsens as we go to the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. And then our coronary ligaments are also going to be tender. That's all super tender. Sorry, repeat that. Coronary ligaments, tender palpation on the medial aspect. All very tender. Okay. How are you down through here? Fine. No. Uh, distal MCL and, and PES answering non tender. Anything on here? No. Okay, so tibial tuberosity is good. Let's check. Anything in through here? No. This feels good. <laughs> a little massage. A little massage. Okay. So over here I'm checking for popliteus because that little fluid that we found mm -hmm. uh, seems to be fine on palpation. A needle will change that. What's that? A needle will change that? Yeah. How are you down here? Fine. Okay. How's this? Fine. How's this? Uh, sensation immediately, but like, uh, it's not painful. It's just weird. Okay. So I think it's sort of be meniscus. <clears throat> Let me check. Nice when you're doing that. Okay. It's not nice. You do have, it's not a ton, it's a touch lax. more lax yeah. on the uh, drawer test. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so maybe we'll also treat your ACL as well. Okay, uh, let's have you flip onto your stomach for a second. Let's just. Nice and relaxed for me. Getting tenderness in through here. I mean, I don't think anything significant, no. Okay. down through here. Fine. Okay, so any pop this is probably fine then. Okay, so. <clears throat> Let's see what we got. Okay, so uh, based on uh, one, your imaging, two, the history and your physical exam, I think the things we are gonna treat today, um, we're gonna treat intraarticular. That's gonna help bathe the meniscus from the top side. Uh, because we have the imaging, and we know where your meniscus tear is, we'll actually do an intrameniscal injection coming from the posterior medial approach into the posterior horn. Inject a little bit of PRP into the meniscus, and then we'll come out of the meniscus, inject a little bit of PRP around the meniscus as well uh, to try and help uh, healing kind of from both sides. Um, the coronary ligaments, which are in, take the insert the meniscus onto the tibial plateau, those are uh, often involved in the pain that we have with meniscus tears. Uh, so we will treat that. Um, and I think that's, that's everything we had, right? Intraarticular, mainly the meniscus. And the MCL. Uh, I think, I mean, I'll look at the MCL under ultrasound. Uh, you had a little bit of pain with MCL testing, but when we test the MCL, you also stress that medial meniscus. Yeah. So it's hard to know. Um, you don't have any distal or proximal pain on palpation of the MCL, but there still might be something over the medial joint line that is just, we can't tell the difference on physical exam because when I push on that part, I'm also pushing on the meniscus that's torn. Uh, so I'll, I'll look at it under ultrasound and if we need to, we'll treat that. Um, but I think, uh, I think that's a, a good approach. How do you feel about that? Feels good. Okay, beautiful. We will go get everything all set up. 
welcome back. So now that that's done. So these, uh, as you heard, the structures we treated are gonna be the meniscus inside the knee joint, um, the coronary ligaments and things like that. And overall that procedure went really, really well. We did end up flushing the knee a little bit. So we put a bit of D5W or 5% dextrose into the knee and then pulled some of it, of it back out. Uh, and the goal with that was to try and clear out some of the inflammatory stuff that can be found in the knee. Uh, and then we did our injection of, of PRP into the knee, uh, followed by our injections into the uh, posterior horn of the meniscus on the medial side, the coronary ligaments, and then also we ended up treating the infrapatellar fat pad as well. So with that patient, um, we are hoping that we can help him to avoid surgery, uh, but have the frank discussion with him that uh, if we don't see uh, big improvements within the next four to six weeks uh, from this procedure, then he uh, is likely going to go have the uh, the meniscus tear repaired uh, at the end of the year, which is just the reality sometimes with these cases that, uh, you know, uh, regenerative medicine is powerful and can help a lot of people, but sometimes surgery is still uh, a really great uh, tool that we can use for patients suffering and pain. So that is our week. Um, next week is Thanksgiving, so we, we won't be here uh, if you're watching this in succession, but thank you if you have watched all the way to the end here. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, do all those cool things, and we'll see you later. Bye.